Hello everyone, I'm your host Brian Alvarez and today we're here back with another interview with a special artist from the east side of Chicago. Uh, someone who has grown up without their father figure and has lost um, multiple close ones but he has overcome uh, adversity and still finds ways to you know push through his music if you know chicago rap you'll definitely like him so yeah make sure to tune in and uh without further ado welcome uh, jig honcho appreciate you man what's up man how you doing man i'm doing good man can't complain yes sir so uh talk to me a little about how i'm like growing up on the east side of chicago i ain't gonna lie growing up on the east side of chicago it's kind of smooth shit like I went to school, like, right around the corner, so I didn't have to walk for real back and forth from home to school, so that was kind of cool. Um, I ain't never played no sports or nothing. Back in elementary school, I used to be, like, a little nerd. Yeah. I was in my books for real. Yeah. You liked reading? Yeah, I love reading. That was my favorite subject. What like, kind of? I, I used to want to be the president. Oh, facts. What kind of books did you like reading? I liked the uh, historical, historical fiction. I like the real books. I ain't never like the fiction books, like little fake books. I like the books that taught you something. Like, Facts. You know? Yeah. Have you ever read anything like recently or not really? Uh, I've been trying to read this little Malcolm X book I got in eighth grade, but I ain't finished it or nothing. I've yeah. been trying to read it though. That's what's up. And then, yeah, so how did your uh, passion for uh, becoming a president, like uh, growing up, become like because like my uncle he was secret service for the president and yeah. i think george bush was the president at the time so it's when you go to my grandma's house there's this little portrait of my uncle my auntie and my cousins right there standing next to um george bush in the white house and i used to look up to my uncle so i'm like i, I want him to be securing me so i want to be the president and i used to think i could change the world when i was little so i yeah. still think that but it was like when i was little i was so more focused on being a president I want to be behind the suit, changing the world, shit like that. Hey, man, you still can. Anything's possible, For sure, right? for sure. That's facts. But uh, so was he one of, like, um, the figures that kind of, like, uh, raised you? In a my sense, uncle. Or? No, my uncle was around, though. I ain't gonna lie. He used to be a quiet person, but I still looked up to him a little bit because I seen how he kept his family together. Like, my uncle, my, me and my aunties and my cousins and took that together. So, yeah, my mama kept me and my sisters together. So seeing a man keep my cousins and them together... And another woman, that I'm like, all right, when I get old, I'm going to stack my paper. I'm going to be better than him type, you know? Right. Yeah, so how was it like, uh, I know, um, you know, it was more like uh, female figures, like, raising you. How was that? How Like, how would you describe it? And do you think, um, it like, obviously, it's way more different than having, like, male figures around you. Uh, what was, like, the impact on you? I say, I ain't going to lie. I kind of liked it. I kind of liked growing up around uh, in a women household because it was like I understood what real love was early and at a quick like at a quick you know in a quick second so it was like I ain't I ain't necessarily need I ain't gonna say I ain't need no structure from a like a father figure type like I ain't I ain't gonna say I ain't need no father cause I damn near did cause shit my mama ain't never raised no son I was her only son so raising me was kinda hard I feel like you know I had a father that would've helped out but Shit, I kind of, I fucked with it, shit. Yeah. I seen what real love was, I eat good, shit. People, they say I'm spoiled, but shit, I don't think I'm spoiled. Hey, thanks. So, uh, other than that, um, so you ended up, um, what uh, high school did you go to? I went to High Park. Okay. I went to and Park. how was that experience like for you? I ain't gonna lie. See, going to high school, it was like a movie, because when I was in elementary, I ain't gonna say I was overlooked, it was just like a... Elementary was like a job for me. Mm -hmm. It was like school, home, school, home, homework, school, home. So when I got to high school, it was like I had a little bit of freedom. Like I could stick my chest out a little bit. And I started, I ain't gonna say I started, I started rapping in elementary, but I started, you know, showing it in high school. So when I started rapping in high school, I had the people that was fucking with me early. And I seen that and I was like, shit, I ain't used to motherfuckers fucking with my music. Yeah. So I caught on to that shit. High school was fun, though. I fucked with it. Yeah. Were you into any sports at all? or Track. track. I did track. Yeah. I did track just so I could beat my teacher because my teacher was a, a track coach. Mr. Okay. Enficino, he was a history track coach. Yeah. And I wanted to beat him. I'm like, all right, I stopped in. I'm like, I want to join the track team just so I could beat you. I ended up messing with it. And I did soccer, too, for my friend Jose because the uh, Spanish teacher promised us we was going to get A's if we joined the soccer team. So hey. I did that. Oh, yeah, bro. Fuck with soccer. Uh 
What uh, what sports teams do you currently uh, follow right now? Uh, I'm pissed at the Warriors, so they yeah. don't they don't punish me right now. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, the Suns pissed me off too. I'm thinking KD. I'm gonna go. I fuck with the uh, I fuck with the Seventy Sixers. I fuck with the Seventy Sixers. I fuck with the Cubs on the baseball side. Hey, what's up? So Thanks. So uh, so yeah, you said uh, early on like people started messing with your music. Uh, so what was like your earliest uh memory of like starting to make music? Um, I say my freshman year of high school. I got other memories, but I say that freshman year of high school was a memory that stuck out because it was like on the first day of school, and like that's why I say like high school was like a movie. The first day of school, after um we went to homeroom, we went to our normal little class to give a little trial run or whatever. It was this boy making beats in the back of my classroom. His name was Marlo. I'm like, these beats low key hard. It's the first day now. I ain't trying to rap on my first day. I'm trying to focus on school, but I'm yeah. fucking with I. So we 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 exchange information. Uh, at the end of class, he's just start. We locked in. I call him my twin and shit. He been my producer and shit. And he started sending me beats. I started rapping on them bitches. And then I did a prep rally at school. My senior year of high school. The whole crowd was messing with my song. Yeah. I'm like, dang. I'm like, I felt like I was at La Palooza. <laughs> right. That's fine. I'm like, yeah. You have any uh, like videos you still have of that or not? Really? I feel like I got a video on Instagram yeah. still. It's on my art chat though. I'm gonna re-upload it. That'd be crazy. I'll I'll clip uh the video on the on this video. For sure. You, you got it. Yeah. So um yeah after so after that um so when did you like uh obviously you record at home right? Yeah. Yeah. So when did you like start like uh, taking it seriously? I say when my little brother Keon died. Cause I used to be writing my own music and stuff, like, but I ain't, I can't never say I ain't had no support. I just, I'm the type of person that want a lot of support just to feel. That's how I used to feel. I used to want a lot of support just to feel like I was done, right? Yeah. And then Keon, he used to listen to every lyric, and he was the first person ever to say I was better than G Herb. And I'm like, fuck, I'm, I'm 18 years old. How am I better than? Her? Yeah. You know? And he met that though. He was like. And then when he died, it was like, I can't stop now. This is the person who believed in me. He made me feel like I was him. Like, he made me feel like I was the GOAT in music. So I just, I never stopped. Yeah, man, got to gotta keep his legacy going. For and, sure. For I sure. mean, yeah, I mean, I believe in you too. And that's a, a that. great friend that, you know, he believed in you. And he for saw sure. the vision for sure. For sure. And I definitely do see, uh, like, the, the G. Herbal reference that he was going for. because. That's what I hear in like your uh, Chicago type rap music, but sure. yeah. So unfortunately, um, uh, if you want to speak on it, he was uh, lost to uh, gun violence. You said yeah, he was lost. Jay, I mean July twenty first, July twenty first. He died. What and do you? Then it's crazy because I think is he the two days before he died, the day before he died. We made our, our first song together in the studio. And uh, did you end up uploading it anywhere? Or? I uploaded on YouTube, but I deleted it because I I was getting I went through my little depressed stage. And I'm yeah. Like, I don't want the world to hit us. Like. Yeah. So um, you know, what do you think uh needs to be changed to like, uh, stop like gun violence, especially in like Chicago? I just feel like they gotta start the youth. Like, they need structure. Like, they need real structure. Like, I don't think, like. The police killing us, they ain't making nothing no better. Because they feel as if, okay, we getting killed by our own people. Then the police, we ain't saved by the police. Ain't nobody here to save us. Right. So we really in war for ourselves. Like, we really live to survive. Like, we got to survive. Like, So I feel like uh, the police start being police. Like, start doing the actual job. Older people start actually looking out for the youth instead of feeding them rotten. Like, Ashley, hey, come here, young buck. How you feeling today? That ain't gay. If you ask him, man, how you feel? Right. That probably changes his whole, that probably make him have a good day because nobody ever asked him how he felt. That's probably his only chance to tell you how he feel, and he probably won't speak the whole day. Sucks. So I feel like communication, we need more communication in, in communities for the youth. And I just feel like we got to uplift each other. And we do that, we'll be straight. We'll be solid. Yeah, I think there's a... Uh... 
I think there is like a stigma of like, uh, you know, like manning up and like, I don't know, like, or people are like scared to help like other men out. Like they, there's yeah. like a stigma around that, which is dumb. And I That's think, weird. yeah, but you should definitely uh, uplift each other no matter what, you know? So that's how uh, change is gonna happen. But yeah, I know you you, you often bring up um, in your songs, you know, um, like it's kind of like the government's fault, or I forgot the specific line lines that you say, but um, you're you state that it's kind of like the government, like not trying to help you guys. Or... Yeah, they killing niggas in our city. I blame the government. Yeah, I feel like yeah, that's the government fault. The government put us in these posi positions is like, like Tupac said, like I, I fuck with Tupac heavy. Police protecting themselves from us, right? But we be in the same environments as the rapists, the killers, the gangbangers. We gotta protect ourselves from them people too. We not them. Every person that come out the hood, not no gangbanging, not no killer. That's probably Barack Obama coming out the hood. Or, uh, Prince, uh, Prince Harry down there. You never know who coming out the hood. Derrick Rose or something. All that shit gotta change. The government say, all right, these black, they all game banks. Anybody come from, they they stigmatize us. They put a statistic on us, and I don't like statistics. Yeah, sure. I don't like that. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, to kind of like change subjects, um, you were talking about earlier how, um, you know, um, then uh, your friend passing away, and obviously um, your grandmother uh, passing away. Yeah. Um, you're battling a lot of depression at that time. Mm -hmm. um, like, what helped you get through that? I ain't gonna lie. I say music. But really, nothing helped me. For real, it just took time. Like, cause I ain't never seen no, seeing my grandma. That was my first time I ever seen a dead body before. And that was my grandma. So it's like, I changed my whole life just seeing that and just experiencing that. Like, my grandma, lady I took care of. Like, I used to be a kid and I was my grandma. So it was like, seeing that, that changed my whole life. I was smoking, I was popping a little pill. I ain't never do nothing for it. That just made me deeper in depression. So I really just had to live life and just, I I say being sober, really. I had to take a break from weed, for real, to really develop myself and realize who I was. Then I start back doing the drugs because I could balance it again, for real, for real. But depression, I don't think nothing can help with depression. You just got to time. Time the only thing that can help with depression. Yeah, I think it it it, does, it never goes away. You just get better at, uh, you know, um, coping with it, you yeah. know. But So what are some things that, like, uh, help helps you, like, cope with it? I say music. I like talking to kids. Like, talking to kids, helping the youth, like, inspiring them, like. I'll be working downtown, I'll be running to the peak kids I get out of high school. I'll be chit chat with them, see what they want to do when they get older, inspiring them. All the little less fortunate people, I'll be looking out for them, I'll be talking to them. Shit, that help me. I be, I ain't gonna lie, I'm a helpful person. So helping Earth, that make me feel good. As long as I help people on Earth, that make me feel good. I'll be, I'll be good. So I'll be happy. Yeah. I'll do that all day. Speaking about uh, help, I know you have a uh, you you got a little team. I know you got uh, cousins that rap too, and yeah, yeah. Uh, you've made songs with them. Do you want to uh, name them? Yeah, yeah. I got Rezzy Reyes, I got Lil J Mo, and I got Stick Talk Benji. I'm my boys, I ain't gonna lie. We got some weed. All this shit organic. I ain't gonna lie. This shit organic and natural. I ain't gonna lie. I, I ain't gonna lie. If it wasn't ever for Marlo, I would never knew how to do none of this shit. For real, for real. Boy, I met in high school. Everyone from him, I would never know how to mix my own music, copy and paste my own beat on YouTube, put it on FL Studio, use auto tune. He helped me a lot. I ain't gonna lie. And then I know you mentioned uh, you guys kind of like share the studio setup. Yeah, yeah. yeah so Jamo got his own equipment, and we would just share that. We would just take turns. One person would be writing while Jamo recording, or I'd be recording. And they'd be smoking in the car, just. Baking each other, like we laughing off each other, you know, shit like that, organic shit, you know, natural shit. Facts. And then, when was like the first time that, uh, like you guys actually like released a song together? Oh shit, me and Jamo, our first song we ever dropped was Thirty Nine. That's on YouTube. Then Rez got a song on his album we dropped. I forgot what's the name of it. 
I forgot what's the name of Because Rez be dropping every day. He be dropping. He won't even tell us. He, we got a song on Apple. We'll just hear it in the car. We, like, we on Apple Music? Yeah. But yeah. Then me and J-Mo, we got, a, we got hella songs. I ain't gonna lie. That's fire. So uh, in the future, like, uh, do you guys have, uh, you just got planned working on any projects together or just gonna? Yeah, we got a project coming out. We got a project coming out. We don't know what we calling. We don't know what we calling it yet, but it's gonna be a twenty one song project. Dang, crazy. All different <laughs> sounds, genres, all type of stuff. Right. And then so uh yeah, what's uh what's your writing process like? Shit. I used to write all right no more. I used to be freestyling. But my writing process when I used to write I used to write when I was like seventeen, eighteen. I used to write when I was in Maryland. Ever since I came home from Maryland, I started writing. But my writing process, I listen to a beat. Nah, I just write a hook. Then I cut the beat off. Then I write my verse. I just read the hook a cappella when I cut the beat off. I just write my verse a cappella. Then I cut the beat back on, see how it sound all together. It's going to sound right regardless. So I just like that. But ever since I came back from Maryland, all my shit been freestyles. Then uh, I know you were in Maryland for what, like eight months? You said, how was life over there, or how 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 do you think your music changed at all? Or I ain't lie, Maryland was decent. I ain't like Maryland at first because it was like I had to move to Maryland right after Keon died. But that was the plan already. Him dying wasn't the plan type shit. Cause I was living with him for a week. And my mom got into it. My auntie called me. She was like, "I, right, you gotta go to, you gotta come here before you go to college, just to clear your head." I told him that he was kind of angry, or whatever. So I went home for quarantine. Next day he died. Next day after he died, I had to get ready for my plane. On his funeral, I had to fly out to Maryland. So it was like I couldn't even see that boy at funeral. Like I couldn't even go to his funeral. So it was like. Then I get to Maryland, it was like, they rushing me in college. So it was like, shit, what the fuck? I can't grieve. So it was like, then I had to work. I got my first job. I wasn't complaining because it was like, I, I'm getting money and shit. But I wasn't, I wasn't caring about that. I wanted to like, I ain't never lose. That was my first time I was losing a childhood friend. Like, yeah. But after my grieving, it was decent. I started accumulating my own money. I started going to the studio. Like I started investing in myself. I started realizing who I really was as an artist and as a human. It was like, all right. They wanted me to go to the army. I ain't want to go to the army because they said I need a structure. They was like, all right. They, was, they kept putting that, all right, you getting older, you starting to lose it. That's because you ain't had no father. You need to go to the army for structure. I'm like, all right, if I need structure, I'll go back to Chicago. Right. Came back to Chicago to gain structure. Bro. That's um... And then, uh, so I, I know you're the first song that you published was a uh, light freestyle, right? Yeah, that was the first song I put on. Was it 2021? I think it was 2021. Yeah. Yeah. So around that time, like, uh, explain like, um, what 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 did your sound? Uh, what kind of sound were you were you going for around that time? And um, were you still developing at that time? Or? Yeah, I was still developing. I'm still developing shit, but in 2021, I was like. I almost, that was like heartbreak part one. That was like the year I would, I, it was like, life was really happening. I was seeing my grandma get sick. Friends wasn't being friends for real. Then I was going through my little, you know, manly stage. Like, I, right, I'm peeping shit, this shit taking a toll on me because I was a little hard. So I'm like, I. Right, I'm getting my little depressed stage because I'm like, all right, I'm being around this shit, but I shouldn't be around it because these niggas don't love me for real, but I'm just being around it because I love their ass. They ain't healthy. That's mm -hmm. toxic. So, shit. I, I, I said I was in a sad type of year, and I was trying to put out a message. I was trying to put out a message. I was trying to make that message real clear. Um, bro. And, uh, how did you end up like finding who um, you know who, who your real friends are? And who are there for you? Shit, God, I be praying. I pray a lot. I be always praying that God surround me with people around people that is good for my spiritual and physical well being. That's it. Life happened, and then I seen who was really that for me. Thanks. And then uh, a little bit after, 
in 2022, uh, you dropped your first project called I'm Back. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, obviously, I'm back. Like, mean, meaning you're back, was it, like, kind of you referencing, like, back into, like, making music from, like, um, yeah. kind of your depression? Or? Yeah. It was just because people, I'm not going to lie, when I was in high school, I was going through my little bitch fits with music. I'm like, I, I quit music. I quit music for, like, three weeks. Now I started back. And I said, I quit after a month. And it was like, I did that shit again after I graduated, but I made it damn near permanent. So it was like, I I started getting back into, like, I started really having the air for music. I'm like, I, I ain't gonna let that project one of my best. It was, I was on some cocky shit. Them all throwaways. I was just on some cocky shit with that. I just threw that out just to show them niggas, like, I, I ain't go nowhere. I'm still here. Mm -hmm. That was just a, you know. A message. Yeah. Okay. And then, do you think you kind of, like, obviously, uh, you're kind of like hockey at that time, and you're just trying to like prove a point or a message. Yeah. Do you think you kind of still like still have that attitude, or yeah, with yeah. The, with this upcoming uh, this the, the most recent project? Yeah. yeah. I not like them at all. Hell yeah. yeah. I'm cocky as shit. I pop my shit the whole album. And I still got some shit, and it's like, I I consider it like this. Being quiet ain't gonna get you nowhere. If you really can pop your shit and the fans can hear you, and that's like that's like your evidence type shit. Like all my songs, to me they damn not raw. Ain't nobody rapping like me, so it's like the fans can hear that. I ain't lying or shit. My all my songs back me up on what I say, so it's like hell yeah. I be trying to slow down on that cockiness though, cause I know there's people out here that got it too. Like, I be giving niggas they credit too, but it's like. It been so long for me being an underdog. It's like shit. Why not, bro? I feel you. Um. So, uh, what do you have like a favorite? Uh, do you ever have like a favorite line that you have in any of your songs that you can think of, or uh, maybe even uh, just a specific song? Shit, I say this one because this is it's gonna be a video I drop so I say. I used to rock USPA Nipsey Dad, so Lauren back. I was referring to Ralph Lauren, but I was also referring to Lauren London because she did a movie after Nipsey Hussle passed. So I said, I used to rock USPA. That was fake Ralph Lauren. Yeah. You know? Yeah. See you. Oh, yeah. I be just saying shit, you know? Yeah, some of uh, yeah, some of my favorite uh, songs from my back was uh, Nonstop in London. And then uh, church, with the, yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. What was uh, so what was like the, uh, the process for that project? Uh, and then obviously you do have like, um, the the cockiness message, but like, yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna lie, when I dropped, don't like them at all. The uh, the process, I ain't gonna lie. It was like this. I'm gonna be quick, and I'm gonna rap whole beats. Cause back then I used to only could rap for like, fifty seconds, a minute. So now I can freestyle a whole beat. I be on my juice real type shit. Like I don't know, I don't be freestyle. I could freestyle whole through. I be punching in though. I'm gonna keep it a hundred. So it's like I pick beats that's gonna get people attention, and that's gonna get the industry attention type shit. And it's like I whatever my mood is that day, I record myself, and I make the message simple and clear. I don't really ask for feedback on my music either. I just be dropping that shit how I just feel like I just drop a I drop an album tomorrow, just on some hash shit. Just cause I list the five of my songs and I said they raw. Mm -hmm. I drop them bitch tomorrow, type shit. Thanks and uh, yeah, you mentioned uh, you pick beats just based on what the industry likes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to what extent do you think um, that takes away from like your artistic creativity and your kind of um, Creative control. I ain't gonna lie. Not to cut you off though, but I ain't gonna lie. I can rap on any beat. I just be picking because, like, I pick beats I love sometimes. And all the beats that I love, they not what you might love, or my mama might love, my sister might love, or whoever might love. So I just be picking beats that the people love. And when I say industry, I mean the people too, because sometimes people be industry. They love industry rappers, so the people be industry type shit. So it's like, I pick beats they fuck with, just so they can hit me up. Cause I'm a, I was stand, I'm a, I'm a snap on any beat I rap on. So it's like, why not type shit? I can rap on any beat though. I could go country, 
I could go 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 music. I could do anything. Yeah, I I know you mentioned uh, that you you don't want to be like labeled as just just a rapper. Oh, I'm an artist. Uh, yeah, effects. And then so like what uh in the future like what do you see yourself like what kind of beats are you hopping on or what kind of flows are you trying to go for? I ain't gonna lie. I damn that changed up. I damn gonna be on some motherfucking. I might tap into the Nina Simone. But, uh, James Brown samples. I'm gonna fuck with the old heads. Cause it's like, that's what the kids fuck with now. Kids get drunk now. They look, they'll put on some oldies. They'll throw on, let me hear some throwbacks. They'll see get drunk to that shit. So, it ain't shit for me to go to uh, Bob Marley or something when the people get high. You know, I'm gonna just fuck with the different genres based off what the people fuck. Fuck with type shit. Yeah. Bro. So who who are uh, like some artists that uh, you look up to right now? I fuck with Kanye. I fuck with Jay Z. Even though they ass don't be dropping, I just fuck with their ass as humans. I fuck with but the artists that's dropping now, I fuck with Flat and Ari. I fuck with Dre. I fuck with Lil Jamo. I fuck with Rezzy Rez, TikTok Benji. Shit myself, of course. I don't really be listening to other artists though. I ain't gonna lie. And uh, I know uh, at one point, uh, you, uh, G Herbo brought you up to one of his uh, performances. You were on like stage with him. Yeah, yeah I was on stage with G Herbo. Yeah. So how how did uh, that come about? And uh, did did you get to speak to him at all? Or nah, I ain't speak to him. I ain't gonna say I was shy. Yeah. But I be on my like when I see famous people, I don't be fanned out. I just be like, I got this motivation thing in my head. Like, all right. I ain't got 50,000 in my pocket. I ain't got my change right now type shit. Like, right, I'm going to see this nigga later type shit. Like, and when he see me, he's going to be oh, you know, I'm going you know, to work my way to their positions, then speak to them. I don't want to speak to them right now. And that's just how I feel. It ain't no, no, no shot shit. I just don't want to speak to none, no famous person right now. Yeah. That's how I'm in that position with them type shit. That's how, you know, put the work in to be where they at type shit. Facts. So when, uh, when you are in that position, uh, who would be like the first person you want to work with? I ain't gonna lie. That's kind of tough, man. That's kind of tough. Mm, I say I'll work with. I ain't gonna lie. The fans gonna want me to work with her. Yeah. They gonna want me to That'd make a song with her. They gonna want me yeah. to make a song with her. I'm ready to go I'll make a song with Chief Keef too. That'd be Fireman Classic. Yeah, yeah. Trippy Red, I'd make a song with Lucky. I make a song with a lot of people. They just gotta ask them shit. Oh, yeah. So I ain't asking. So, yeah, uh, besides music, uh, like what else do you see yourself like venturing into in the future? Or I wanna be a sports commentator. Like on like NBA commentator. Yeah. On my own, let's show on ESPN. Um, bro. Then I want to be into movies. I want to be an actor. Yeah. I fuck with the power. I want 50 Cent to put me in a little movie. I fuck with the power to be a mouth. That'd be wrong. Yeah, yeah, I fuck with that. I do the actor. Be an NBA commentator. Then I'm going to be a realtor and shit. I'm on paper. I'm going to stack my paper in different, you know, developments and shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. Then, uh, yeah, so coming up, uh, I know obviously you faced uh, struggles, uh, like you know, yeah. growing up with uh, without a like f- male figures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what what advice would you give to someone that's in in like the same environment as you um, to uh, kind of like grow in that situation? I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna tell you, stay the golden child, cause look, that shit hard. It ain't fuck what the people say, fuck what the world say. Growing up with just a mother and without no pops, that shit damn near hard because you're seeing a woman struggle. So you're going through real emotions every single day. Your mama might tweak with you. She not, might not even be mad at you. She might be tweaking with you just because she damn near can't even pay the bills, smile. That shit hard. And you seeing that shit for yourself. You're an eyewitness to him. That's why, that's why you're different. That's why motherfuckers like that be different. So shit, I want them to keep their head up. I just know they different, and they gonna make a difference, oh, bro. Everybody gonna make a difference, but especially to them, they gonna make a difference. Sure. Thanks. And then artistically, uh, what advice would you give uh, to an artist? 
shit. I tell them, y'all gotta know y'all raw, for real, for real. If you know you, you know you forcing that shit. That shit gonna take a long time. You forcing it. I ain't gonna lie. That shit gotta come organically. A lot of people just ride for the money, and that shit cool. But if you wanna make a stamp in this shit, and you want to, you wanna be like DMX selling out Africa and shit. You gotta really find your purpose with the music. You gotta find what flow for you, what beats you should do. When you got, you gotta just that shit gonna come work mechanically. I get all of them support. I support anybody coming up. Shit, how are we gonna pay off? Y'all just put y'all grind up. Y'all grind. Y'all gonna be raw, bro. Thanks. And then uh, I know you're working on. Uh, you got a music video coming out. Um, anything yeah. else? What What do you have coming up next? Uh, what's yeah, your... I'm finna drop an album. I'm finna drop an album. I, I don't know. I'm gonna do the video first. I damn gonna do three videos before the album. Album damn it don't come until like July 21st. I'm gonna do three videos. I got one video right now with Garrison. That shit raw. I got a little snippet on my phone. That bitch raw. Hey, gotta yeah, check yeah, that out. Yeah, yeah, that bitch raw. Yeah. All right, well, uh, yeah, man, that was it. Uh, thank you for being here. And, uh, Appreciate you, man. For sure. Yeah, make sure you go check out uh, Jake Honcho. For sure. uh, take it. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, appreciate you for coming out, man. Uh, sure. Third Eye View interview. And uh, yeah, we're out. Shout out.